Free BSD reviews, tutorials and gaming. Right, we're going to install it. Um, I've been told that there's been one or two changes and fixes, uh, a few new additions. Um, and we're installing it on a SanDisk 64 gigabyte um, USB stick. Right, it looks fairly uh, familiar so far. You have to excuse the shaky camera. Uh, it's only a little Kodak I'm using. I haven't got I haven't got much filming equipment, but um, this I'll have to do. I did try using a webcam on another computer, but it wouldn't keep up, and the quality really wasn't that good. So uh, you know, shaky cam time, I think. Right, we're just gonna we're just booting up into the uh, installing process. I think the way it works is it installs itself onto its own USB stick, uh, like expands or extracts onto it. I think. Yeah. Oh, there's the new installer. Yeah, new graphical installer. Uh, looks very similar to. Yeah, it looks like I know it's open box based is uh, Nomad BSD, but that looks like Fluxbox at the top. Kind of slim down version of. Uh, the Debian installer, I think, from many years back when I used it. Well, so uh, select down to the right thing, United Kingdom. I'm liking this new installer. It's a it's a nice slick touch. Before you can use NoBSD, there are things you need to set up. The setup will only write to USB flash drive it's coming running from and will not change your system. So it's just telling you that you can install it onto. Um, your USB stick in your computer and it won't change anything that you've existently uh, got on there. Click next. Uh, English, oh, English detected English UK, that's very nice. Uh, yeah, we won't touch them, we'll just leave it at the default. And it's already detected London, that is very nice, I like that. Very good, excellent. Right, we'll just find our um, current account. Yeah, okay, we'll just put a password. It's not going to be super secure for this one, but it doesn't matter. That's good, it says okay. A right, little indicator at the bottom there, very good. And, okay, now. Yep, it's asking if I want to encrypt my home folder because it's a mobile OS and you'll be taking it from computer to computer. Um, you might want to protect what's on it. So that's a good little touch. I like that. And of course the default applications. I got this originally wrong. I thought it was asking you to uh, install them and uh, I got all flustered when I realized that they'd installed the alternatives but it's just a default so it's one that automatically defaults to when uh, you start up the desktop. We'll keep them pretty much like that. That's a good, yeah, that's a good selection. I like that as your default. And there's what you've just done, the choices that you made, time zones, etc, etc. Uh, yeah. Commit it. And it's going to do its business, right? Uh, expanding and writing to the USB stick. We'll actually uh, fast forward that. Make sure I'm almost finished, yep. There you are. And that's done. I like this installer. Absolutely nice. <coughs> Done a good job there. Do you want to? No, I don't want to cancel. I press the wrong one. Whoop! Nope. That's it. Very nice. That's excellent. Anyway, so I'm going to reboot the system, and from there, I'll be able to um, install one or two things and record from the desktop itself using Simple Screen Recorder. So you won't have to put it with this shaky cam no more. Alright, select which boot device, quite a few there, so I'll uh, go down to the right one. Little 
time to focus, but yeah, it's okay. Well, I say when I tried the webcam on the um, other computer, good grief. I mean, yeah, it was nice and clear, but you couldn't see the text. Don't mind what I did, it was just overexposed and blurry and uh, it was awful. So this little camera is the only thing I've got. And it does its job, so I'll uh, I'll keep using it, I think. Right, we're booting into it. At the moment, it's not USB 2. It's not USB 3, it's a USB 2 um, USB stick. So it's not the fastest. It's not a slouch, but it's not the fastest. Uh, one or two cam status here. Let's ignore them. They're not, not showstoppers. Now this is a new bit. Uh, if you encounter a graphic driver problem, yeah, I think this is a response to the problems they had uh, in the release candidate one when a lot of NVIDIA uh, cards weren't loading up the drivers properly and you were just getting a uh, blank screen or terminal. Very good. So it gives you a choice of um, VESA or uh, auto detecting your NVIDIA. And there's the installed desktop. And uh, we'll switch to it now. Right, we're having a look around. Uh, things look pretty much the same as they did before. Uh, not much changes that way. But there has been a lot of changes under the hood for um, Nomad BSD. And I'll just read some of them out, actually. There's been quite a few. Uh, bug fixes and new additions, I think. I'll actually read these out as um, you can watch me interacting with the desktop. Nothing really has changed that much, so... Uh, I'll just let it play in the background. The base system uh, has been upgraded to FreeBSD 12.0 patch set free. Uh, trim has been enabled by default, which is really good. Um, so I have actually installed it onto a, a an SSD drive before, an external one plugged in through a USB free connector. And that's actually a good way of um, getting your system up and going. You don't necessarily have to use a USB stick and the SSD is really, really quick. So trim's been enabled, that's good. The uh, dialog base setup has been replaced by, yeah, well, no, by a QT uh, GUI, which supports dynamic translation. That's very good. Current available translations are German and Russian. All right, okay. Uh, the default repository has been changed to quarterly. That's good. That's a good sensible move, actually, so it stops things from continuously updating and possibly breaking. Uh, a recent copy of the Nomad BSD handbooklet has been added to the Nomad's home directory, which is good, good reading. A nice, uh, one thing I would have perhaps done is, um, I don't want to tell them, this is, this is the thing, I don't want to tell them how to do their own job, but perhaps if they'd had put uh, on the desktop, so it's the first thing you can perhaps see on your uh, empty desktop, so you might want to click on that, I don't know. I mean, it's brilliant that you've put it into the home folder, but not to be hidden away. Just a link to the desktop would have been good, I think. Uh, D menu has been added, which can be started you, uh, by pressing Control Space. All right. Yeah, this is the one that I encountered last time. Um, I filed off a bug report to them. Probably I wasn't the only one to do it, but it says a bug where NVIDIA GLX libraries could not be found because of a path changes in the NVIDIA driver has been fixed. In drivers 304, 340, and 390 were affected. Yeah, we've seen the dialogue at the beginning before you log in. Uh, that's been added to the uh, init GFX script, which allows the user to choose between auto detection and non accelerated graphics driver. Yeah, we saw that one, that's good. Oh, I didn't notice this one. A script for installing Nomad BSD to hard drive has been added. Oh, that is very good. I mean, like I say, I mean, I've managed to install it to an external um, SSD. That's pretty close to uh, getting onto a hard drive I did before. But oh, that's very good. A script for installing NoBSD. All oh, right. Okay, I'll have to look into that. To have no, Nomad BSD as a, a a desktop operating system. Oh, I like that. 
and support for building 32-bit images has been added. Very nice. Okay. That, there is some nice juicy ones in there. I like that. These guys uh, have been really busy. They've thrown out a really, really competent operating system. And uh, I can't praise it highly enough. I think it's fantastic. I think they're very competent and... Uh, I just think it's brilliant. It is. It, just, it seems to have come out of nowhere. I mean, that's like a year or so ago. Uh, wasn't getting much attention. For the videos that I've also made, I'm not to bang my own drum, but I brought Nomad BSD and shown it working, and a lot of people have been piqued by it. The interest has been piqued, so... Yeah. I think it looks brilliant. And personally, I can't wait for uh, the third release candidate. Hopefully that's the last one. And then we can have the full uh, full release of 1.2. Now we got to remember, that, I mean, the previous one was 1.1, now it's 1.2. It's only a point release. Uh, usually point releases are, what, minor changes? But they're point releases that these guys have done. Huh. It's, uh, it might as well be a version 2. Very good. So, yeah, it's just a, a quick look around, a quick update. To show you what's changed and what hasn't changed. I mean, you know, the overall aesthetics hasn't changed that much. Uh, but it's just a matter of smoothing things out, installing it, changing the process of uh, interaction when you install it, and fixing the uh, the bugs, which is a, an, an essential task, of course. So, yeah, it's looking good. Uh, the proper release is looking uh, something to look forward to, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.